All right, viewers. So now we are entering Jeddah, the city that I adore for my childhood memories. And I uh, didn't get to live here as much as uh, my other siblings, but that was enough for me to make some lifelong good friends. So right now we are in the heart of Jeddah, not the skyscrapers part. It's just one of the few that is a combination of so many cities in the United States that you would get glimpses of. Yeah, so the road patterns are certainly uh, similar to Houston, Dallas, and some of the best uh, uh, cities that were planned in the United States. I don't know if Houston was planned ever, but uh, the road pattern, the highway pattern, the overall uh, structure or infrastructure uh, is, is more like it. The other part about Jeddah that I really like is the accessibility overall. It's a big hub, just like Riyadh. The road systems, the overall areas like Cornish and some of the other areas uh, 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 are really worth going for. It's like Jumeirah Beach uh, in Dubai. I mean, Jumeirah Beach is at a different level, but uh, uh, Cornish is not, not far behind in terms of, I guess, if you lived in both the places. You wouldn't have as much to do in Cornish than in Jumeirah, but uh, again, you get the point. The niceness of the area is what I'm talking about. The other thing is on every roundabout or traffic circle, you will see some sort of a great architecture or great art piece in Jeddah. That is very unique to Jeddah that I now saw uh, in Dubai that they also try to um, do the same. Just like that circle right there, you know, there's a, there's a clock. It's a pretty artistic functional clock. And uh, similarly, as we go along, you will probably see. So right now we are heading towards Saudi city and we'll, I'm sure it's way more developed than it was back then. And we'll just uh, try to get some lunch over there. See the palm trees and everything else. And then look at the high-end stores on the left. Shopping, they had, Jadda had at that time one of the best malls all around. I don't know how they are now uh, because now the, the whole world has changed. So, so look at all of these shopping areas. Look at that. And the roads are way better now than they were before, to be honest with you, so far in Jadda. So, um, look at that, look at that. You got Dunkin' Donuts, how do you got everything uh, in Jeddah, pretty much. So, but that time was good enough to uh, make some great lifelong friends who are still, basically that I, I still have the same group of friends that I had 33, 35 years ago actually okay now you have to deal with the traffic I guess but uh, what I was saying is today since I am with my son older son I wanted to just show him that uh, compound that we lived in it's known as Saudi city and I'll see if they let me go in because it's uh, at that time the security was really strict only the residents or the guests could come in at that time and uh, if anybody who was visiting from outside they would have to put their IDs there at the gate and yeah let me give you a little background on uh, why I love Saudi City so much is at the time when we lived here it, Saudi, Ara Saudi Arabia was a very very restricted country and there were so many restrictions uh, from, you had to carry your uh, just like we have uh, PRs and green cards and things like that you had to be sponsored by someone and if let's say our father was working over here so we would have to carry the documents at all times uh, in our back pocket all the copies of those documents and then we would have our own IDs from the organization that he worked for and uh, there were so many restrictions back then and Saudi city 
was a very, very highly westernized compound where uh, it was built only for foreigners. And that's what made it special. Plus it was built in such a great manner. Uh, Saudi City, Aramco and some of those expat compounds that uh, they would have everything from a TV station to telephone exchange to, uh, see this is what you have to do sometimes when you're in this type of situation. Where do we have to go? Straight? So basically Saudi city uh, was built for expats and uh, foreigners and Britishers, uh, Americans, Pakistanis, Indians and uh, other countries all around the employees of Saudi Airlines uh, that, in, up to a certain grade level they had to be in order to be eligible to live in Saudi City. So it was a very exclusive place and it had about eight or nine recreation centers within the compound. Recreation centers by that I mean like you, you had all sorts of sports facilities whether the swimming pools and every recreation center, gym, tennis, volleyball, table tennis, you name it, they had it. Soccer, at uh, that time we called it football. So that's what made it so exclusive and enjoyable for the people living there. Now Saudi City is not even 10% of what it used to be because obviously just like everything else, uh, it has been, uh, I guess, uh, commercialized and uh, a lot of those sections in Saudi City have been given to other companies for offices and things like that. No, not enough maintenance. And that was the place where even if we had to change the light bulb, we would call the maintenance and they would come and change it. And so that's the kind of life that we had in Saudi City. In America, we can only dream of, unless you're a billionaire, uh, you, you, can, you cannot have those uh, facilities. Uh, now they have many more compounds, uh, which are way better than what Saudi City was. But if you compare Saudi City at its peak in those years, and the new compounds and take uh, where the world has gone in terms of technology and everything else, I think it would still rank amongst the best places. Uh, but now it's, uh, there's no competition because it's not, it has not been maintained. So, so uh, let's see if they can get me in, but at least I'll show you around the compound if I can't get in. Just past Ferrari showroom back there. Now we are nearing the area of Saudi City. I think we're almost there. I don't remember a thing. So this is Maserati. So this area is still as nice, it seems like, as it was back then. Back then it was not as developed, but it was uh, kind of a posh area. Yeah, so this is nearing Saudi City. There were palaces, there were so many things around Saudi City. And you can feel this is still a very nice area and you know those memories are just coming by look at that building look at the graphics there see that that's what I mean you wouldn't even worry about what speed the other car is coming that's the Saudi office my god this is so many memories to come to this office all the time to drop my fa father. Gate 8. I don't know if they're going to let me go in, but let's just see. All right, so he told me to go through gate number 3, so they still have some security. But uh, these are the offices. That was the Saudi office, the main Saudi Airlines office, and uh, it's to come here all the time. Now I'm going to go through gate 3, we're going to go around Saudi City. Look, I mean, this is too much traffic over here though. This was the Saudi Airlines hospital. So you, you know what I'm talking about. It's like a city within a city. That's why it was called Saudi City. It still looks good to me. Well, none of these buildings existed. At least from what I can remember.
even the Saudia city building that I mean Saudia building Saudi Airlines office building that you saw um, didn't exist back then and it was built because b before that there was a green building that was the headquarters of Saudi Airlines office so look all around I mean I think the residential part is what has suffered but the rest of it is uh, is pretty look at that look at that it's no remorse no regard so many memories and uh, see all of this residential areas they've made offices a lot of those uh, villas don't exist anymore this was the mini market and this was the main Albeik even when I got my American visa as a student I had to take the whole group and they wouldn't spare anybody especially me so look at this this was all residential area back then and in order to come to this mini market we would just actually jump over the fence and uh, come and make sure that the security doesn't see us so this area was called Khalidiya and yet yeah, these are old shops they still existed the whole I guess the whole block was there what's in front didn't exist King Sultan Prince Sultan Road is where the uh, gate is all right so uh, let's see if I can get through this gate because uh, you know they have strict requirements as I mentioned earlier this was the masjid or mosque oh they closed this gate altogether but the gate after the masjid should be there I think this is it and uh, wow none of this existed but obviously that is to be expected let's see alright brother thank you so much so yeah he let me in